Thank you. Thank you all. <clears throat> well, this whole, uh, this whole month we've been talking about falling in love with life. You know, it's fall. We're falling in love with life. And today, particularly, we're going to be talking about dealing with the barriers we put up within ourselves that keep that joy of life away from us. And I think that's really important because I remember when I was in uh, catechism, we, when I was in cat, we had to memorize that whole small catechism. I mean, it was a big deal. And one of the things was, um, lead us not into temptation. We're studying the Lord's Prayer. Lead us not into temptation. And the explanation of that was, God indeed tempts no one. And God doesn't put these barriers in front of us. We're pretty good at it ourselves. You know, thinking of all the, you know, let, let me worry about this. Let me fret about that. Let me be unforgiving about this or that. So that's what we're talking about today is, and we're going to do it a little bit differently. And, of course, I'm going to be using my laptop, which you know I'm very proficient at. <laughs> Maybe not. But I'm also thinking this is going to be a good little holder for my notes, which may or may not be the case. I'm not sure how far I can see. So um, we know that um, Rumi, you know, Rumi, the Persian, he, but he writes a lot about this stuff, joy in life. And uh, we're going to be talking about that a little bit. But I also want to talk to you about something we call race consciousness. You know, race consciousness is all that stuff that's ever been said or done or felt or you know, all that stuff. It's sort of like those seeds that come up in our garden that we didn't plant. That's race consciousness. You know, an accident happens. I didn't plant a seed for an accident to happen. I didn't plant a seed for a loved one to get sick. That's race, there's, there's stuff that's out there. So uh, we know that a lot of that race consciousness is, is stuff we have to kind of fight against. Like for instance, um, sometimes we start to be, begin to think, um, suffering is good, suffering is holy. If I'm suffering, God must like that. Eh, not true. Not true. A lot of that race consciousness stuff that we've absorbed over the years is not true. And so we, we have to kind of retrain ourselves. And this is what we're talking about this month. It's okay to feel good. It's okay to be joyful about life. Okay to have fun. Okay to, to laugh. Okay to let our hearts sing. And so that's kind of what we're all about. Um, in the book that Dee Dee read from Your Soul's Assignment, Chris Michaels, he's a, he's a science of mind minister. He wrote, he wrote, having fun isn't a frivolous activity reserved for goofy people. It's a valid compass that you can use to keep your life on course. If your work is fun, then you're in the right profession. If your relationships are fun, then you're with the right people. If your life is fun, then you're living the right way. Use joy as your compass to keep your life on track. Now he ends with this statement, which I don't totally agree with. He says, Making, make having fun your number one priority in life. <laughs> I think it's going a little further, but it, it does remind me of a, it was kind of childlike, right? That's what kids do. When, when I woke up my 10-year-old Chris, when she was a little kid, I'm sitting on the edge of her bed, and I said, well, what are you going to do today? And she opens her eyes, just woke up. She says, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> How beautiful is that? But if we could bring a little bit of that into our adulthood, how lovely that would be. Um, Dennis Merritt Jones, another science of mind minister, has these uh, ideas for living. He says, we must be growing, we must be serving, and we must be having fun. So, you know, I wasn't raised with that kind of an attitude, especially when I went to church. That wasn't about having fun. It was about feeling really bad because we were such bad people. 
and you know, and I certainly believed it. That yeah, I I was a sinful person and didn't deserve much good going on in my life. Holmes says we need to accept the fact that the universe is planned for creative joy, and that we possess the ability to be happy in it. God wants us to be happy people, and his mind has given us the capacity to know joy and express joy. And to do this, when we do this, we fill our inheritance. That's what we're here for. You know, we are ve vehicles, that one power in the universe that created everything and everyone is within us, experiencing life in, through, and as us. Why not give that spirit a joyful ride? He also says, life is not just something to be endured, it's to be lived in joy and the fullness without limit. We must get rid of old, morbid, theological concepts. I place no value on anything unless it brings gladness, love, friendship, and the ability to laugh. Now, this is Ernest Holmes. Now, wouldn't he have been a great guy to know? I just think he would have been. And he was a fun guy. I mean, reading stuff about him, he liked to party and have people over. He was very social. He was very joyful. So a good um, affirmation, I think, is my life is meant to be filled with joy. And I think we could all say that together. My life is meant to be filled with joy. Amen, brother. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we've been quoting Rumi this month, and Rumi's quote for today is this. Your task is not to seek for love, because um, l love is already here. Merely to seek and find the barriers. That's what we're here for, to seek and find the barriers that you've built against love. So that's what we're talking about today. Let's find those barriers that are keeping our joy from us in whatever way. So um, again, I'm going to be doing a little something different today. And uh, it has to do with this laptop. And um, let's see. No, it isn't working. Surprise, surprise. OK, well, I think this is beyond our ability to fix. So I'm going to get customer service on the line, OK? You're with me on this, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> customer service, my best friend. Oh, my gosh. My, t my TV, as you guys know, I've been having a little trouble with, but was working just fine until I was going to watch Netflix, something on Netflix. I get to the Netflix screen, and what do they want? They want me to sign in. <laughs> they want me to put in my username and my password and whatever else, and nothing I put in my phone. Not, they didn't like any <coughs> of it. I have not gotten the gumption to call customer service yet. But right now, let me get customer service on the line. Ring-a-ding-ding. -ding. Customer service. Well, How can I help you today? Is this Reverend Joanne again? <laughs> At your service. Well, I just turned my comp computer on to do a demonstration before an entire room full of people, and it won't let me move forward because it says it wants to upgrade my system by installing a new software program called, um, it's called Limitless Life Operating Volume dot EXE. Oh yes, that's the L-L-O-V-E program. You know, we just call it love for short here. And it's getting rave reviews from all the customers who have installed it. Well, I'm sure it's a good program, but how can I bypass this so I can get on with my presentation? Well, I can help you bypass it if you want, but are you sure about that? Love is trying to find you. Maybe you ought to be willing to be found. Well, Yes, I guess I am if it won't take too long. What do I do first? Well, the first step is to open your heart drive. Have you located your heart drive, ma'am? Yes, I have. But there are several other programs running right now. Is it okay to install while they're running? Well, what programs are running? Let's see. I've got pasthurt.exe, <laughs> lowesteem.exe, grudge.runondocument, 
and resentment.endlesstext. Those are all running right now. Well, that's no problem. Love will gradually erase pathurt.exe from your current operating system. It may remain in your mem memory permanently, though, but it will no longer disrupt other programs. Love will also eventually overwrite lowesteem.exe with a module of its own called highesteem.exe. However, you have to completely turn off grudge.run on document and resentment.endless.text. Those programs prevent love from being properly installed. Can you turn those off? I don't know how to turn them off. Can you tell me how? Well, sure, it'd be my pleasure. Go to your start menu and invoke forgiveness.exe. <laughs> Do this as many times as necessary until grudge.run on document and resentment endless text have been completely erased. Okay. Okay, done. Ooh, wow. Love has started installing itself automatically. Is that normal? Yes, that's normal. You should receive a message that says it will reinstall for the life of your heart. Do you see that message? Y yes, I do. I is it completely installed? Yes, but remember you only have the base program. You need to begin connecting to other hearts in order to get the upgrades. Oops, I already have an error message. Now what do I do? What does the message say? It says, error 412, program not run on internal components. What does that mean? Well, don't worry. That's a common problem. It means that the love program is set up to run on the external hard drives, but has not yet been run on your hard drive. It's one of those complicated program things, but non, in non-technical terms, it means you have to write love into your own machine before you can transfer the program to others. So what should I do? Well, can you pull down the directory called self-acceptance? <laughs> yes, I have it. Excellent. You're getting good at this. Well, thank you. You're a good teacher. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> Click on the following files and then copy them to my heart directory. Forgive.self.doc, realizeworth.txt, Acknowledge brilliance.doc. The system will overwrite any conflicting files and begin patching any faulty programming. Also, you need to delete verbose, annoying, self critic.exe from all directories. <laughs> and then empty your recycle bin afterwards to make sure it's completely gone and never comes back. Got it. Hey, my heart is filling up with new files. Smile.mpg is playing on my monitor right now, and it shows that peace.exe and contentment.com are copying themselves all over my heart. Is this normal? Sometimes. For others, it takes a while, but eventually everything gets downloaded at the proper time. So love is installed and running. You should be able to handle it from here. One more thing before I go. Yes? Love is freeware. Be sure to give it away in its various modules to everyone you meet. They, in turn, will share it with other people and they will return some similarly cool modules back to you. Well, I will, and thank you for your help. By the way, what is your name? Well, you can just call me the Divine Cardiologist, also known as the Great Physician, but most people just call me God. <laughs> most people feel the need for an annual checkup to stay heart healthy, but the manufacturer, that would be me, suggests originally scheduled daily maintenance for maximum efficiency. Put it another way, keep in touch, bye for now, and good luck with Netflix. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff, for uh, being that divine cardiologist. Uh, in, in Rumi's words, he says, your task is not to seek for love because love is seeking you and life is seeking you, but merely to seek and find all the barriers that you have built against it. So just in review, what those, what those uh, barriers are, just based on kind of what you heard here, certainly hurt. Past hurt is a barrier. There's apparently uh, a little movie called The Cure Is. It's uh, by Greg Braden. You know Greg Braden? He's just a great author and, and speaker. And he, um, I, I, of course, can't get Netflix, so I couldn't see it. But <laughs> I, that's my intention, because I'm sure that would be interesting. The cure, it, it's, the cure is, and it's all about unresolved hurts. And when we carry that stuff around, it's a barrier to our joy. 
Uh, another thing is grudges. If you're carrying a grudge, who is it hurting? It's hurting yourself. Get a, these are the barriers. Um, resentments, you know, how easy it is to kind of live with some of this stuff and take them for granted, not think about them every day, and not realize that they're, they're dragging us down. Low self-esteem, inner criticism, that voice that tells us every, everything that we do is wrong. You know, once, a couple days ago, I, for some reason, I was going through my life thinking about all the things I didn't do right. And I thought, wait, why would I do that? I would never do that to a friend. But for some reason, I was just, can I do anything right? And, and, and that's what, get that, that is a barrier to the joy that we can have in our life, this inner criticism that we have. So how do we override those programs? Certainly by forgiveness, forgiveness of ourself, forgiveness of others, uh, realizing our self-worth, Realizing, there's a couple um, uh, affirmations, the forgiveness affirmation. Today I break down the barrier to love by forgiving myself and all others. How easy is that? Just say that. You know, to, when you're up against this, just tell God, you know, and I'm not quite, I always say to God, I'm not quite there yet, but I am willing <laughs> to forgive myself and others. And, and when we say that, God takes us at our word and gives us that leg up. Uh, realize uh, our worth. I realize my worth and see that life is worth living. These, these are important things. If you notice that you've got one of these barriers, just work on it and sit down and write an affirmation and keep it in front of you. This, it, I mean, this is, this is how life works when we do this because... Why? Because that very power that created everything is the power within us, and that power within us is powerful. So our words and our expectations and our intentions are powerful. Uh, and acknowledge our brilliance. As I see my brilliance, I see life, brilliance, and the barrier is gone. Just allow yourself to know that, yeah, if I have that power that created everything and and Everyone, if I have that power within me, yeah, darn right, I'm, I'm brilliant. <laughs> I've got that power. i got that wisdom. It's all within me. The other thing that I find very powerful to uh, get over these barriers, break these barriers down, is an attitude of gratitude. And that is so easy to do if we make a habit of it. Just make a habit. And I, I have done this some, somewhere, some along, somewhere I got a book in the mail last year, first of the year. So every, every day this year, I, I open the page to Monday, and then I write down three things I'm grateful for. And I do this in the morning. And then there's other questions they ask, too, when you make an affirmation for the week. Very helpful. I did it this morning just to get myself on the right track. And so every morning, I, I list my my things I'm gratitude, I'm grateful for that day, and then I, I read what I wrote. What is my affirmation for the week? What do I want to accomplish? It's just very simple, but how powerful that is. And when we are in an attitude of gratitude, we are not resentful. We are not unforgiving. We are not beating up on ourselves. So that gratitude is so huge, and we'll be talking more about that uh, as November rolls around. So this is how we break down the barriers and install a love of life into our hearts, into our heart drive. <laughs> so uh, when we do that, when we do that, when we break, break through those barriers, we just empower our lives with joy and love and peace and laughter and all good. That's what we do. And we have the power to do that because of that power that we walk around with all the time, whether we acknowledge it or not, it is there. And any time you're up against something, all you have to do is remember, oh, that's right. I got that very powerful source within me. And I can call upon that source to get me over this hump, whatever it is. Holmes says in his book, Ideas of Power, 
There's a song in the universe. Let's sing it. There's a hymn of praise. Let's praise it. Kind of like your song. There's a joy, a beauty. There's a deep abiding peace. Let's experience it. There is laughter of God. Let's laugh it. Yeah, lovely. That's, that's Holmes. He, he, was, he was just very intent on making sure people understood what we're here for is to be joyful, not to be walking around in sackcloth and ashes. So anyway, uh, barriers, we can overcome them with all that good stuff. And um, I would like to uh, invite you to join me in a spiritual mind treatment. And um, I am going to say this in first person uh, as, as if it were for me, but it is for you too. And I'm going to focus on um, a prayer of thanksgiving and joy. <sighs> and I know there is just one power in the universe. And that power is a power of joy and love and peace and laughter and good. It is the power that has the perfect solution to any perceived dilemma in life. And that very power experiences life in, through, and as its creation, in, through, and as me. And therefore, I declare that right here and right now, I open myself up to thanksgiving and gratitude for everything, this beautiful day, these beautiful days that we've had in September. Yeah, we need some rain, but by golly, it's so nice to see these leaves and the blue sky and the warm weather. I'm grateful for that. Grateful for all the people that I love and their, their involvement in my life. And that includes the people sitting in this room right here and right now. I am grateful. And I feel a sense of joy. Just putting off any worries, any frets, get them off my table. I don't need that. I am open to all the good spirit has to give, all the joy. And I'm grateful that this is the way life works. I speak my word, it is done unto me as I believe. I am ever so grateful for that. And I release these words now to the beneficent conspiracy which does the work, and so it is. So it is. Reverend Joanne. You forgot to hang up the phone, but it does sound like you have your love program working. I'm going to have to disconnect now and go talk with Moses because he's got our original word processing program.